So uh, I'm really happy to be able to be here and talk about our new UW Campus Navigator application for indoor outdoor navigation, which is coming soon. Uh, it's coming to uh, Apple and Android OSs, as well as an HTML5 web app that will be available on the basic platform. Um, we didn't include Windows because it's a fairly small market share, and yeah. the HTML5 works pretty well anyway. It will probably be a, a fairly dominant use. Um, we are targeting the first quarter of next year, so it, when I say soon, I mean soon. Uh, we've been working on it, and uh, things are looking really promising. Uh, so the biggest question, you know, when I talk about indoor navigation, why do we need indoor navigation? If anybody's been to health sciences around here, um, <laughs> I don't need to answer this question. Uh, but for even the non-health sciences areas, um, you know, a standard room you would think would be logically numbered. And, you know, this building here kind of has a, a racetrack design. You would think that, like addressing, the room numbers would get bigger as you go down the hallway. In reality, it sometimes they don't work that way, uh, and it's extraordinarily expensive to fix. So we can actually just provide a tool to help you get where you need to go. Uh, we are partially funded by student technology fees, so we are very focused on student support. Um, you know, be able to provide access to or support for finding classrooms on you know early uh, quarters. Uh, they can be hard to find. Uh, we have a, an odd campus layout. It's a fairly large campus, uh, but also be able to find all of the student support areas, so the registrar, uh, food service, things like that. Um, so a little bit about the infrastructure. Uh, like I said, we've been working on this for a little while now. We've got about two million square feet uh, in as sample data that we've been playing with. Uh, we started with the quad as kind of an open public area, and then we also added in the Capitol Parks office buildings because well, it's our stuff. Um, but it, it's actually less than ten percent of the campus, and so it, our campus is huge. And this actually represents about thirty miles of routes just for 10 percent of the campus so it's going to be big when we're done uh, we do have a little bit of a, a different approach uh, to gis a lot of what we do is actually cad based so we have a, a hybrid cad uh, gis uh, process for creating the route network and we do that in 2d cad but only some of it and it's actually converted over to 3d gis and then the rest of the things are built automatically so it's a very easy sustainable process to create and maintain, which is very important for us because we don't have a lot of staffing. Um, and we already know CAD, so it's fairly easy to just plug in. Um, we are looking at adding in a variety of points of interest. So like food and coffee, I mean, if you're going to class, you need to get coffee first, right? Um, but also, you know, where's the bike racks and other things like that. I mean, who knows what those could be? What we're trying to do is also implement a web interface to provide like housing food services the ability to easily go in and manage those points of interest themselves, which will roll into the app and it'll update like every night. Uh, this is the app. Actually, this is like an early prototype of the app. Um, it's changed a little bit and will probably change even more before we actually deploy. Uh, but it is fully functional. In fact, we are running this over in the demo room if you guys want to come by and see it. Um, I have it on my phone. We got a couple of devices running it. Um, it works fairly well, um, and it looks okay. I think. We're, we're trying to make it look a little bit better, though. There have been talk of like pop prints for the tracks. We're, we're 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 not sure we're going to be able to make that happen, but we'll see. Um, so ideally, you know, everyone wants real time navigation like you do with driving, which requires that the system knows where you're at. Well, GPS doesn't work very well indoors, alone down in the basements where it's not going to happen at all. So we're looking at implementing uh, Wi-Fi fingerprinting technology, which will allow us to enhance the, uh, the location service inside of the building. But uh, we're not entirely sure that that's really going to be effective with the Wi-Fi access point infrastructure we have. So we're also looking at uh, another uh, technology which enhances that with sensor fusion, which is the Wi-Fi fingerprinting plus using the phone and the phone sensors for accelerometer and compass and things like that to help refine some of that. Um, we're not really sure how this is going to work, but we're we're hopeful. Uh, and this is going to be you know the first first version of the app, and, and things will get better, and, and hopefully it'll be really useful, and people will say, oh yeah, this needs to be better. And here's some more. <laughs> One to help, right? Um, and of course, you know, we're definitely very very concerned about security. Security is a big thing for us. Um, we have a lot of areas on campus where we are not going to provide navigation. Uh, it's public areas only. 
Um, we don't even know the extent of all the security. We're actually meeting with the uh, Chief Information Security Office here at the UW tomorrow to talk about security and what we can show and what we can't show. But the goal is that, you know, it is going to be just a pure public app. Um, worst case, they might have to log in with that ID. We'll find out. So that's it.